Greetings Leo and a warm welcome to your in-depth year 2024 astrology and horoscope forecast. This is for the sun or the ascendant. I'm going to briefly outline how I'm going to structure the video. First up, we need to look at the eclipses. There are two in October 2023 because they're going to provide a very intense backdrop through the first months of this new year. That takes us to the turn of the year. We can take a snapshot as year 2024 dawns, and that gives us your solar return. There's some incredibly important interplanetary energies in that, not least that Mercury in your sister fire sign of Sagittarius is retrograde as this year begins. And then we need to look at when Mercury goes direct, but also the arrival of Pluto, the mighty Pluto, the planet of transformation, back into your sector of relating, which will be on the 21st of January. But also early in the year, relationships, particularly of a romantic or social dimension, are really highlighted for you this year due to the location of Venus. So Venus is in a very playful position at the start of the year, but it is conflicted by the rather stern energies of Saturn. Then it shifts into Aquarius, joining up with Pluto, so we need to take a look at that. At the end of February, Chiron, the wounded healer, is joined by the retreating North Node in the part of your situation to do with higher knowledge and philosophies, perhaps also the opportunity to travel. But that brings us to the first of year 2024's eclipses, and we have a lunar eclipse which occurs on the 25th of March. This is the mirror image of the solar eclipse of the 14th of October. What's that going to tell us? What will that suggest for the following six months? And then on the 8th of April, we have a solar eclipse back in the sign of Aries, which of course is a sister fire sign like yours. We have the North Node there, we have Chiron there, but critically, you also have Mercury there as well when this event occurs and it's in retrograde. So this is a year when all but one period after Mercury has initially been in your sign, it retraces its steps in the sign of Virgo, an Earth sign, and then it's in retrograde in your sign, and then it goes into retrograde in Sagittarius again as the year draws to a close. So we are going to have a lot of fire energy that slowed down this year because of Mercury retracing its steps. But how will those eclipses play out? Because for you, they're going across the two axes of the third and the ninth houses. The ninth house initially in terms of the solar eclipse, the third in terms of the lunar. And that's all about exchanges and communication. So with Mercury retrograde in your ninth house, that's going to be something we really need to explore. But then I'm going to dive into Jupiter. Jupiter, the planet of growth, is in a great location for you through the first five months of this year. But then it moves into a very friendly, fraternal area, suggesting the rest of the year is going to provide some opportunities for you in terms of your social interaction. But we also need to check out the role of Saturn and Neptune. They are continuing in your 8th house all year, but they do go through two long retrogrades, of course. What are the dates and what are the implications? I will share that with you too. We also need to look at your personal new moon, which occurs on the 4th of August 2024. It's broadly opposite tiny but influential Pluto, but it's forging a blisteringly positive angle to Jupiter and Mars in your sector of longer term planning and social interaction. I feel that's going to really springboard you forwards in a very dynamic way. So truly exciting. But we do have the introduction of a new eclipse series in September, and that sees your second and eighth houses activated. And that's very much about resources. And that is going to be in Pisces, but almost side by side with the dreamy 
dreamy drifting energy of Neptune. So that does hold some complexities and I need to just explain what those are about for you. But then early in October we have another solar eclipse in Libra. So your everyday communicational sector just like in the middle of October 2023 once more is lit up for the last quarter of the year but important to understand the impact of Mercury moving back into the sign of Sagittarius but also going back into a retrograde. So Mercury's been going through some uh, long-standing retrograde seasons last year it was earth signs this year we get a small section of earth sign retrograde in Virgo but the year before in year 2022 it was all watery retrograde so uh, an interesting uh, evolution in where the retrogrades of Mercury are occurring. So all of these things I need to unpack for you so please stay with me for more. I'd just like to share with you a very special opportunity. If you're watching this video in year 2023, you can order your year 2024 personal horoscope forecast based on your unique birth data, and I will prepare for you the rest of year 2023 free of charge. If you're ordering within year 2024, you will get a full 12 months from the exact time of your order. You will also, my special package, get 30% off and your character analysis report, your life roadmap. This will help you to understand the patterns that have repeated themselves in your situation, help you to seize upon the opportunities and get a much more intimate understanding of some of the challenges and how you can work with them future forwards in a more effective way. Please see beneath this video for more information. So Leo, first of all, let's look at those two eclipses which occur in October 2023. First up is the solar eclipse in the sign of Libra. But what makes this particularly sensitive on this occasion is that the south node has now switched into the sign of Libra and is pretty close to the position of that solar eclipse. So over the next six months, this is asking you to think very much about your everyday connections to others, whether it's neighbours, whether it's siblings, whether it's through technology, whether it's through what your belief systems are based upon, but also how you convey them. Anything to do with electronic media is really going to be stimulated by this particular eclipse. All of this is quite exciting too, because it could give you the stimulation to learn new skills or impart knowledge that you already have. But on the 28th, we have a lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus. Now this is the last in this series opposing the Sun in Scorpio and for you this is across the fourth and tenth houses. So uh, Taurus is a very visible position to have the Moon for you and it may be a, a little bit difficult to disguise your feelings and because the solar eclipse is in the very instant third house which is quite mental, it's rather Gemini-like, there can be a tendency to react to things very fast whereas the position of the lunar eclipse means that if you do it's going to be hard to mask your reactions and if you're a particularly uh, private Leo which Leo people can be uh, you know certainly have a, a strong need to protect your sense of pride and your prestige so important not to rush any emotional communication that might come up from that point in October through the first three months of year 2024. I think the chances are that there could be greater interaction in your family situation or greater dialogue. That seems to be what those two eclipses are suggesting. But if there have been pressures around financial matters linked to property, that is something you can use your mental faculties in a very skilled way to engage with 
due to the energy of the solar eclipse linking with the south node because that kind of gives you an instinctive idea of where you can just draw up from deep within you some inspiration to apply to your present situation new approaches that brings us to the solar return the solar return the snapshot of that moment when year 2024 dawns so as the champagne corks are popping at that precise moment the sun as always is at 10 degrees and two minutes in the sign of capricorn now for you that's the sixth house so very often leo people can be leading the way when it comes to setting new year's resolutions because the sixth house is very much the sign of virtue and you also have pluto just in this position as the year begins so it depends on where the sun is in your particular situation how uh, much influence Pluto will have so if you're born right at the start of Leo or right at the end of Leo Pluto is much more likely to have more of an impact but let's just take out some standout details from this chart because the things uh, the thing that really uh, sparkles for you is the collection of energy in your sister fire sign of Sagittarius at least on the face of it because Mars the planet of passion and drive and desire is in house five quite redolent of the energies of your sign so that's going to give you a lot of desire to express yourself right through year 2024 but it's also pretty close to mercury the planet of communication which technically is detrimented in the sign of sagittarius but it means they're so close together and with mercury retrograde there could be a tendency for the urgency that mars brings to situations and the the nimbleness of mercury for you at times to rush things so just be conscious that that's a fine link for expressing our ideas with passion enthusiasm could give you a desire to demonstrate your talents and artistry in a freer way sagittarius all this year but just be aware of the potential to rush things also you can see that venus is in this location now Venus in Sagittarius is a very freedom loving influence and if you are someone who's very sociable and you have quite an active uh, 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 mix of interests and friendships there's likely to be a lot going on this year. The problem Leo is the energy contained in house eight which is very much to do with deep transformations. If you look that Saturn is at three degrees and 14 minutes and that's actually in a square with venus in sagittarius at 236 a square is a very tense angle of 90 degrees this is just slightly outside of that that's very tight so if you're in a relationship a romantic relationship where you want a bit more freedom to pursue your interests and hang out with your friends more that could pr prove troublesome for a partner who may feel uh, that they want to apply some kind of limitation on that freedom saturn limitation venus and sagittarius freedom if you're single it may be that yes it looks very bright and promising and you're in the mood to get more interactive but saturn is saying but what about the money because it's in the eighth house so there's a limitation there applying from saturn to venus but what about mars and that retreat in mercury well look there's neptune also in the sign of pisces and house eight in a square when neptune and mars square it really can be tricks the central so you could be drawn towards someone this year, this year if you are solo who actually you could find very very evocative and very hard to resist but whether they be really good for you may be hard to ever know because this person may be quite mystical mysterious but also elusive and you may never get to the bottom of what they're really about also neptune squaring to the retreat in mercury is a recipe for confusion so if you are thinking about being more speculative this year in terms of trying to generate new income schemes just be aware that whatever you're told in business saturn and neptune eighth house may not actually match 
the enthusiasm that all that energy in Sagittarius is manifesting. So you need some care around those influences. But I still think having that gathering of energy, despite the retrograde to Mercury, is going to give you an appetite for life this year. But we do need to look at what else is apply, applying to other parts of the chart. And the big one is that the moon is in a direct opposition with Saturn and therefore T-squaring with Venus. Now the moon square Venus is one of those squares that actually can be very generous and it could see you being kind-hearted as you often are to good causes or even looking out for someone who's closer to you who's not going through such an easy time. Just be aware though with Saturn in the eighth house, close alliances or business interests could be draining to you if they're not fundamentally working. So in other words, if you have to raise finance or there's an element of risk involved, that fifth house energy, just be mindful of whatever you're getting into. But in an existing relationship, I think Saturn opposing the moon, the moon is the home, the family, the mother, and Saturn could be said to be the father in some ways in more traditional archetypes, which you know, it could be argued are not so appropriate now, but the moon is slowing, is slowed down by Saturn. So there could be some kind of restriction around your home uh, life this year. Perhaps it is to do with the cost of living. Perhaps it is more to do with uh, uh, where you live, how you live there. Perhaps it's a lively home. There's people coming and going and you're not necessarily going to get the peaceful moments that you may crave but somehow or another Saturn does seem to suggest some kind of restriction on the moon. Fortunately the midpoint between the moon and the sun which gives you the balance of this chart suggests your home will still be very important to you this year because it's eight degrees in the sign of Scorpio. But Scorpio of course can be very private energy and for someone as gregarious as you that may seem a little bit paradoxical to the more outgoing energy that's showing in the sign of Sagittarius. But if you're someone who does like entertaining and you're very good at cooking, perhaps you're going to bring people around to the comfort of your abode and spoil them. Now in any natal chart, the most important factor is the planet or position right at the top of that chart. That's the sunshine part. And for you, it is Jupiter. So you can see it's right at the top of your chart five degrees in the sign of Taurus. So right through to the 26th of May, I think there can be some real forward movement around your professional situation, potentially even around money. And also if you are looking to move homes or improve where you're li living, even though Saturn applying to the moon could make it a little bit of a struggle at times, maybe a bit inhibiting to your peace and quiet, having Jupiter right at the top of your chart and opposite that midpoint suggests that you can receive more acclaim and you could manifest the type of home life that you want, but it may require some uh, diligence, a little bit of persistence and maybe a slice of fortune too. But talking of fortune, which Jupiter is linked to, look at the position of Jupiter at five degrees 34 in the 10th house of success, linking with the moon in Virgo in the second house of everyday money and self-worth at five degrees 59. So that's almost a perfect trine, 120 degrees, one of the most enabling angles in astrology. But look at the position of the sun in the productive house six, 10 degrees 02. Okay, it's a bit wider. It's about just over four degrees away from Jupiter. And yeah, it's about four degrees, uh, exactly four degrees away from the moon. So that forges a grand earth trine. Now look at the houses they're in, not just the planet. So Jupiter's in the business-like money sign of Taurus, but in the 10th house, which is a, about very much success and traditional approaches. The position of the moon is in Virgo, which is about precision and a care with resources, but it's in the second house that's very much in keeping with Taurus. And then the sun in the ambitious Capricorn in the sixth house, very much in keeping with the precision of Virgo. So there is a mutual receptivity between those three positions. 
I feel that if you're someone who really isn't going to approach life in too much of a cavalier way, all that energy in, in Sagittarius, but you go uh, through your plans this year in a very systematic and very careful but very consistent way, you actually could do really well this year in terms of your career. It's just all about the communication. And I think where flamboyance comes into it or where there's uh, charisma sparkling between you and others, that's where things could prove to be a little bit more disappointing this year. But if you're prepared to really uh, be very disciplined, there are real benefits uh, to come for you on this solar return. So I think that's really, really exciting for you. So that gives you a flavor of the solar return. Very charismatic with all that Sagittarius energy, but care around the detailing of any plans through Mercury's retrograde, not rushing things. You could be a bit impetuous at times with Mars applying to Mercury and Neptune can distort and Saturn can limit Venus. So in terms of your romantic situation, a bit more of a challenging chart for this year, but there are still positive things to come. Uh, I'm going to go through those, but your worldly interactions look extremely promising. So next we need to look at the 2nd of January because Mercury has moved forward. So it comes out of its retrograde in your sister sign of Sagittarius. But it doesn't come out of the shadow period. But the great news is that on the 21st that Pluto moves back into the sign of Aquarius. Now we had 11 weeks in 2022, we get over 30 weeks this year, but the critical thing is that Pluto moves back into Aquarius on its birthday. Pluto was initially thought to be discovered on the 8th of February, then they found an old photograph looking back through uh, when they were peering into space and they realized it was actually the 21st of January. So this is very symbolic that Pluto returns to your sector of relating on its birthday, the 21st of January. And of course, when the sun itself moves back into Aquarius. So even if Mercury is retrograde at the start of this year, which suggests that when it comes to your social plans, there could be some stop start moments this year, to be honest. And any time you feel particularly spontaneous, those are the things that could create frustration. But the position of Pluto applying to the Sun is then supported by Venus. And on the 17th of February, Venus moves into the sign of Leo and connects with Pluto. So that is going to be a very important phase. If you've been getting to know someone and it's been going really well, the connection between Venus and Pluto at this point of the year can be incredibly uh, influential in seeing you really merge your resources in a way which is quite spiritual in some, uh, some senses. Pluto, remember, is about transformation. Venus can be about money can be about self-worth, can be about desire. Certainly when we put Venus alongside Pluto in Aquarius, we're probably talking about the longer term future. And we're also talking a bit more idealistically. It's certainly a time, even if a relationship is struggling, to bear in mind the friendship that you share with the other person and also to recognize that not everything necessarily will be perfect, but we can celebrate the things we have in common, the commonality, and that's very Aquarius. It's the sort of higher principle. But equally, of course, Pluto can be about uh, the destruction and the rebirth of any part of life. So if there is a relationship in your situation, particularly if you're born very early or very late in Leo, if there is a very weak relationship in your situation, this could be a critical point and could see you thinking very carefully about whether you want to continue. The reason it's very early is because it's an opposition. Very late, it's because it's a quincunx, 150 degrees. And both positions are quite difficult to integrate both sides of the equation. Now, obviously with the opposition, you're talking about a challenge. So it's possible that Someone could come into your world who you find very exciting and dynamic and alluring and attractive, but they may not necessarily uh, 
uh, immediately meet every one of your expectations. They may push back in some ways, which you may find exciting or alarming. With the quincunx, if you're born later in Leo, it's more about it can become more difficult to integrate what you need as an individual with how you need to uh, be more invested in a more psychological or even sexual way. So in a long-term relationship, if you're born towards the end of Leo, the sexual intimacy part of the tie or even shared finance could be something that does become quite a big topic from the 21st of January, particularly up to around about the third week of February. So that's a very dynamic part of your year for relationships. But then at the end of February, as I mentioned before, the North Node is reversing backwards, inversing in the North Node in the part of your situation to do with your higher purpose. This is the Node of Fate. This is the direction of travel you're being drawn towards. If there's part of you that really does crave more personal freedom and independence, this could be another test for any relationship you're in that you do feel crowded by. Remember that solar return, Saturn, the planet of limitation, applying to Venus, the planet of love. And again, if it's money or a difference of values or a lack of quality intimacy that is really engaging you, that could be something else that triggers your thinking. So a lot of that ninth house energy can be about pushing you to be more adventurous, but more in touch with what gives you a sense of feeling alive and spontaneous which is quite the thing for a Leo, because remember Chiron is where we can feel wounded. And the ninth house can be, say for example, you are someone who's very practical and you didn't go to college and get a degree because maybe circumstances didn't allow, or you just preferred to go with a trade. If you're perfectly at peace with that, that won't come up at this time. But if you felt that perhaps uh, there was some inadequacy that came from that. This would be a good point to think about, could you start studying for something, whether it's a foreign language, a new skill set in terms of a professional qualification, or perhaps uh, thinking of going on some kind of correspondence course online, because that is going to expand your knowledge hugely, and that can be very healing. But also, this connection of energy between the North Node and Chiron can make you much more aware of where you feel limited. And because you're a fixed sign, you don't necessarily find it easy to be spontaneous. And having a rhythm and a structure to your world often gives you a sense of comfort and familiarity, but that also can become as stale as an old pair of slippers. So if you are in rather a safe way of being, this year is definitely going to provoke you to be much more uh, experimental, to be honest. And that brings us through to the 25th of March. And we have a lunar eclipse here that reflects back opposing the solar eclipse, which occurred in Libra on the 14th of October. So how's it going with those chatty conversations that I mentioned the solar eclipse would stimulate? This lunar eclipse is going to ask you to become more aware of whether your conversation matches how you feel. The third house is very mental. It's very quick, Gemini-like energy, but also can be a little bit frivolous and at times even a little bit um, reluctant to engage with more deeper emotions. So I think really that that lunar eclipse over the following six months is basically saying not to celebrate trivia in your conversation and to try and get in touch more with what's more meaningful. And that really becomes more apparent with the uh, solar eclipse, which is a total solar eclipse on the 8th of April. But that does have a catch because Mercury, the planet of communication, as I mentioned before, is going to be in a retrograde when that occurs. So that Mercury retrograde in Aries, your sister fire sign, begins on the 1st of April and goes through to the 25th. Therefore, the solar eclipse, the total solar eclipse, which occurs on the 8th, has Mercury retrograde not very close. It's about five degrees away, but threaded into the situation. 
I can almost guarantee that over the next six months you could do some rethinking about how you can expand your life and make it more dynamic. Or you could become much more aware that perhaps what I've said about the safe structures that you adhere to have actually started to really become quite wearing to you. You know, staying with what we know is definitely something that we all, we all have certain uh, rituals and ways of doing things that we find comforting. And that's a, a great thing to have because it gives us a bedrock of our identity. But if it just becomes so samey, then that steals a lot of our oxygen. And because all the Mercury retrogrades bar that brief one in Virgo are in fire this year, they're pushing you to be more inspirational. So rethink where you can be more risk taking, to be honest. So the solar eclipse over the following six months in the ninth house is suggesting that some kind of dynamic change needs to come into your life. But the retrograde to Mercury suggests that you could be thinking about it a great deal, gaining lots of information, but not necessarily come in to a settled position right away, which is fair enough, on exactly what you want to do. The interesting thing with Mercury retrogrades, of course, is that when we eventually emerge from them, we do experiment with some things that don't work out very often. But once we evolve from the whole process, which is usually about 10 weeks, actually we realized that the thing we ended up with is probably the thing we really needed, even if it wasn't the thing we thought we needed at the outset of the process. But I feel some new information, education, travel, new experiences, for example, around your work, you know, if you have always wanted to do something that's to do with the travel industry or higher education or publishing, or you've wanted to write a book, or you've wanted to up your interaction on the internet, um, or you've wanted to do something that's more to do with connection to overseas, this set of influences, the solar eclipse, the Mercury retrograde, the North Node and Chiron all in the ninth house are really challenging you, Leo. You know, you have a reputation of being the leader, of being hugely charismatic and having fantastic amount fantastic amount of sparkle and epiphescence which is all true but you're really being urged to shake something up this year which may seem a little bit daunting but the strange thing is if you don't go for it somehow or another circumstances may change the situation anyway so it's all about deciding how much influence you will have over the process which brings us to the change of position of Jupiter. So Jupiter ingresses into the sign of Gemini. And this is a lovely position, you know, because this is very much about uh, bubbly interaction. Obviously, Jupiter in Gemini uh, is technically detrimented, but it's going to be exciting. You can have lots of conversations and chats. And also, you could find yourself moving around much more uh, frequently just in terms of your everyday world so that could mean up in your fitness campaign cycling more walking more um, joining in with your local community more your desire to connect to others is going to be quite uh, markedly higher but that then sees us get round to your personal new moon so 4th of August and what a personal new moon this is. So as I mentioned, Mars by this time has moved into the sign of Gemini and is very closely aside Jupiter. When Mars and Jupiter are together, it's very dynamic. A lot of enthusiasm is going to be bubbling around from that, but that's feeding into the position of the sun. Remember, your sign is governed by the sun. So this particular new moon is for everybody the most important new moon of the year because it features your ruler, the sun. Now we could argue that the Cancerian new moon is the most important new moon for the moon perspective. But for the sun perspective, which is the outer world, the more masculine drive, not anything to do with gender or uh, sexual orientation. This is just a more traditional thrust in astrology and how uh, the texts have been formulated over many centuries. This is your chance to reimagine your individual self. So the individual self 
is about our physical health so you could find with mars and jupiter feeding in that you get a huge burst a huge uplift of extra vitality at this time but most of all it could give you the push to change things in the way that your fixed nature can make it difficult for you to do and sometimes you do have uh, uh, there is a sense with Leo's that you have to work with someone else to get the best out of you but that's going to be really possible on that particular new moon because Jupiter and Mars are in your set of collaboration and friendship so some wonderful developments can really kick in from the 4th of August that I feel that are going to take you forwards but I just need to tell you about the Mercury position because from the 2nd of July to the 25th of July, Mercury's in your sign. So that's also giving you a push to focus on the ideas that are important to you as an individual. Then it goes into Virgo. So you're looking for the hard evidence of your progress, the practical, uh, 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 tangible uh, shaping up of your ideas. But then Mercury does go retrograde from August the 5th in Virgo and it actually comes back in a retrograde into your sign on the 15th of August. At this point you could feel a bit frustrated that something that you started on the back of Mercury's transition through your sign and the new moon isn't quite shaping up as you want. Keep the faith. Mercury goes direct in your sign on the 28th course it's not out of its post retrograde shadow at that point but it then moves back into uh, Virgo on September the 9th and you will start to see all the tangles unravel which will be really satisfying that though brings us to the next eclipse and this partial lunar eclipse is on the 18th of September in the sign of Pisces but it's very close to Neptune you could find with this new eclipse series coming in across the second and eighth houses that your values, especially if you've been trying to monetize a new idea through all that energy through uh, the new moon in your sign and also working collectively with others, but Mercury in your sign too. But you could find that some financial issues do need to be taken very seriously. And the reason for that is that the partial lunar eclipse is very closely tight to Neptune and remember at the start of the year Neptune was causing potential mischief in the right angle with Mercury and Mars so risk was not necessarily uh, the best thing to do when it came to longer term resources so you get a bit of a reminder of that on this lunar eclipse because Neptune and the moon together can be very confusing the best way to deal with this is to actually go to the Virgo energy on the other side of the heavens and use its precision to try to dive into whatever you have to decipher and go through it in a very precise way. Being in a fire sign, sometimes those small details might seem a little bit boring, but that will be really important at that juncture. But then the annular solar eclipse, which occurs on the 2nd of October, uh, is in Libra in the third house but is conjunct Mercury and this time it's very very tight and Mercury's not retrograde. So the ideas that started to bubble away in your mind in the middle of October 2023 they could get tested in late March but you can really find out where you've got with all this extra vibrancy that's gushing into your chart this year and remember from the practical dimension of your chart as long as you go through things in a very systematic way something very solid can build up i think it's more about your soul purpose this year that really needs to transcend into something that's more lit up and excited i think when it comes to the everyday stuff as long as you're in a job or a role that you're quite comfortable with i think you actually can do extremely well so it's more the social romantic 
and soul stuff that's really requiring a gust of new energy and vibrancy this year which brings us to mercury because it returns to the sign of sagittarius on the 2nd of november but for you that's the part of your scope to do with play and sociability but it slams on the brakes on the 26th through to the middle of december and ends the year in sagittarius like it started it in retrograde the fifth house can of course be about romance is there a romantic situation that you're a little bit unsure of at the start of this year and are you still going to be unsure of it by the end of the year but one thing i will tell you let's look at your desires because that's going to be manifested more than anything else i feel by mars in your sign on the 4th of september and on the 6th of September, however, it does go into a retrograde at 6 degrees. Now, it's actually going to be in and out of your sign right through to the 17th of June, when it eventually pitches up in Virgo. Initially, it inverts back into the sign of Cancer. But you have an opportunity towards the end of this year to really go for what you desire. And that's something that's quite exciting. Now, in terms of the deep spiritual changes and long-term finances this year, just know that Neptune's in a retrograde from the 2nd of July to the 7th of December and Saturn from the 29th of June to the 15th of November. And that area will require care, but that solar return, that grand Earth trine, is very promising for you. Yes, you have that lunar eclipse on Neptune, which will need a little bit of care, uh, and that's in September. But I feel that your financial picture, as long as you go through those steady, eddy approaches can do really well. So really the defining thing of this year with all those Mercury retrogrades in fire signs is essentially about your spirit. Is your spirit being manifested in this world in a way that gives you real uplift? You could find yourself chasing something that's not quite going to work out with the uh, Neptunian mystique applying to Mars and also Mercury and Saturn applying to Venus, especially if you're single at the start of this year. But one thing I'll say to you is that your social life and your romantic situation will not be dull this year. But if you're totally focused on personal progression and goals, you can do really well. But even if you are, I think new stimulation, new ideas, new excitement is really what needs to come into your life this year based on the Eclipse series. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Please like, comment, share or subscribe.